Hello, aspiring actuaries. My name is Michelle. This is Actuarial, my actuarial YouTube channel. And today I thought I would do a chill little Q&A for you guys. I put a disappearing video up on my channel asking for questions. And thankfully my channel still has a little bit of life left such that I got a few questions. We all acknowledge I have let this channel mostly die. I am very sorry. I'm trying to revive it. Gonna lean back here. I got my phone to answer some questions in no particular order. How are you feeling? Your ramblings about burnout, motivation, self-esteem, and other life always hits me right in the feels. Thanks for sharing. It's nice when I can realize my problems aren't unique. Honestly, today, feeling pretty good. I had a two-day work week last week, which is very nice. I took Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off. I am very pro four-day work week. During 2020 and 2021, I took half days every single Friday. And I think that was such a good life decision. What else was I using my vacation days on? I loved it. I took a yoga class this morning. That was nice. I went on a nice walk. After filming this video, I'm going to go get my legs waxed. Work-wise, I'm really not busy these days. So I have time to just work on some fun little projects. I am eager to get something a little bit more important to work on rather than just the fun little things that I feel like doing. But it's not stressful. So can't complain. How or why did you choose to go into PNC insurance rather than life, health, or pensions? I'd love to tell you that it was a very calculated, meticulous decision with pro con lists and all of that, but really it was where I ended up getting an internship. I think internships are the best way to sample a career. I got offers from a few different companies. I happened to pick this one. I happened to like it. They rehired me. I kept going. I got hired as an intern in 2012. My first internship was January 2013. It is now 2024 and I work here. I think when it comes to picking a company, a career, PNC versus life, all these decisions, you're faced with a lot of good options. And it's very hard to make a decision because you're like, what is the best option? And sometimes you just have to make a decision. Just look at it and go, this is a good option. This is a good option. This is a good option. Let's pick a good option and see what happens. You never know. Ended up being a good option for me. I stay because PNC seems way more interesting than life. What do life actuaries even do? All they do is pick interest rates. Boring, dull, why? PNC is better. Okay. What kind of related fields can a 19 year old start to volunteer in to gain experience for actuary? I think any office job will be helpful. An office job that lets you work with Excel, chef's kiss. Really good. I don't know what country you're in, but if you're in Canada, get paid. We do paid internships here. You're 19 years old, get a paid internship at a company that lets you play around in Excel. Maybe you learn some Power BI, some Python, something fun. If you're not keen on an office job just yet, same. If you can find something that lets you work on your communication skills, your leadership skills, even if that's something like coaching, peer tutoring, all of these good experiences where you have to speak to people, guide them, all good experience. But do it paid if you can. Any general tips for people who are sitting for exams in upcoming weeks? If you're a couple weeks out from your exam, practice problems. Do all the practice problems that you can. Just keep drilling it in. Get faster. Get good with your calculator. Just problems, problems, problems. The day before your exam, you want to make sure that you're getting yourself in a good headspace to pass the exam. Like you've been studying for a couple months. You're not going to learn a whole bunch of new stuff the day before the exam. Just get yourself in a good headspace. I used to like going for a massage the day before, do a bubble bath. I have a whole video of the day before my last actuarial exam. I vlogged it because I'm cool. And the night before your exam, sleep with your notes under your pillow. Okay. What social study tips can you give students in college doing actuarial science? Form study groups. I don't like studying with people, but just knowing that other people are studying. My first class used to be at like 10 30, 11 in the morning in university because it's university. But a bunch of us would show up at like 9, 9.30 in the morning and we would just do homework together. We would study together. It's a good way to be social, but also productive. It also helps to not have a lot of friends. I'm not like going to parties. If you could not like going to parties, that was my strategy. I didn't go to parties because I wasn't invited, but also it helped me pass exams. So take that as you will. What has been the most fun, enjoyable thing as an actuary? Feeling smart? I think one of the fun things about being an actuary is also the most horrible thing. The exams are terrible, horrible, no good, very bad, but it's kind of fun in that it gives you a goal, a really clear goal. And when you accomplish that goal, you level up. When I was studying for exams, it's like, this is what I'm doing. This is my goal. This is my exam date. This is how I'm going to accomplish it. Once I pass the exam, boom, I level up. I get a raise at work. Boop, boop, boop. You know, like it's a video game. Like we are 
where real life doesn't give you goals like that as an adult you kind of have to make your own way you set your own goals figure stuff out it's kind of fun that you have this built-in goal accomplishment reward system especially if you get raises when you pass exams that's also a fun part i miss exam raises but i do enjoy my fcas salary more than i enjoyed exam raises so what do you think about the use of machine learning models and pnc pricing do you think there is risk in having what is essentially a black box algorithm come up with a segmentation that may capture problematic signals? I spent multiple years of my life reviewing the outputs of machine learning pricing models. I think that they are not perfect. I think we made a real genuine effort to make these models good. I think you can have problematic interactions with any kind of pricing model. I've been to webinars where they talk about some suspicious rating variables and i'll tell you about that the most obvious one is territory if you are rating based off of where someone lives we understand there are demographic differences there are differences in economic status in race in all sorts of things based on where you live another one is credit score in canada there are some provinces that let you use credit score there are others that do not it is a very ugh, variable and i know that there's a similar ugh, in the united states a variable that i didn't realize was sketchy that I learned about in a webinar was speeding tickets. Now you might think charging someone more because they have speeding tickets, that's obvious. If you have more speeding tickets, you're a worse driver, you're more likely to have accidents. And like, fair enough, we do charge on that. However, if you live in neighborhoods that are more policed, you are more likely to get a speeding ticket than someone who lives in a neighborhood that is not as policed. Just because I don't have a speeding ticket, and I do have a speeding ticket, but pretend that I don't have a speeding ticket, doesn't mean that I've never sped. It means that I was never caught speeding. I think that as long as we're making real genuine efforts to not create bad models, and as long as we make real genuine efforts to make corrections when we find out that we did make bad models, I think we're doing the best that we can. I think every once in a while the model's gonna do something a little bit ridiculous. I think one thing that helps is the fact that all the companies are building their models independently and the fact that customers have the freedom and ability to shop around at every renewal. I know that a lot of customers do not shop around, but they have the option and that gives them the opportunity to find a lower price. Do you feel being an actuary will continue to remain a stable career amidst societal changes as well as changes in artificial intelligence? I'm gonna come at this with a biased perspective because it's my career and I don't want to think that it's at risk, but I think we're fine. I really do. I think the job might change. I think we might have to learn new tools. I think that some of the things that we used to spend a lot of time on will get automated. And I think that's a good thing because we don't need humans spending a bunch of time cleaning data and doing other garbage work when you can have machines doing it faster and better. But I think there's going to be a need for a very long time for humans to be in the process. I think that actuaries are very uh, logical, data-driven people. I think that we are good decision makers. I think that we are good at interpreting data. I think that we can learn a lot of useful skills that are applicable to other careers. And so I am not currently worried. Hopefully I'm not proven wrong. If you've got more questions for me, please leave them in the comments below or ask me them on Instagram. I do Q and A's there every once in a while. Subscribe, thumbs up. Thank you for calling. Bye.